So it's uh, been a minute. I haven't been around a lot lately. Um, a lot of that has just been me taking a break from YouTube and doing commissions and stuff like that and just kind of chilling out with the family. Um, but I do want to do something today with you guys and that is a tutorial because I have looked at a lot of tutorials on YouTube for drawing ponies and a lot of them don't really break down the actual anatomy necessary. I in no way know anything about horse anatomy, but what I do know is what needs to be drawn to make your picture resemble vaguely a horse. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the bits and pieces that make up a horse or a pony. Um, so you wanna, you've got a head and then you've got this body and as you can see, let's zoom in. I'm going to pick a very bright color so that I can contrast on this. So you've got a big barrel chest here and then a smaller kind of area there. So when I'm breaking down a pony, one of the things I like to do is to make sure that the body uh, the, the orbs that I'm using to represent the body are two different sizes, one bigger in the front and one smaller in the back, which I actually believe is a little bit different from the show, but I digress. So we're going to do that over here. And since we're doing a pony, we don't want it to be as like lengthened as that is. So we're going to do that. Oh dear. Put that with that so I can move that over. Ah! Nope, wrong thing. Ah! Oh, I drew the head on the wrong layer. Okay, so we're gonna erase. Erase the head. Can I do that? Okay. And we're gonna put a new head on. Do it on the right layer this time. Uh. <clears throat> I am just messing up all over the place, guys. Okay. Head on right layer. Erase that. Alright, so as you can see, we've got this shape here, these three circles, and we'll want to connect that with a line because that represents roughly the middle mass of the body. <clears throat> so, <sighs> reset. So we can see that here. So we got this and here, and then we've got the head. And the line would be like that. Uh, ponies tend to hold their necks pretty high. This horse kind of has it a little lower. Um, so, the one thing I want to talk about that I don't see a lot of people talk about is the muscle... Muscle... Wow, I can't say that word. Muscles. The musculature. There we go. That's the word I was trying to say. So, in a horse, you've got... A big muscle right here and then you've got muscle here and then a muscle here and then the hoof so when we draw a pony we want to do something very similar for the legs excuse my zooming in and out um, so this represents our big muscle and then I usually put a little like bit of loose hair there uh, it just gives it shape. And then we've got this muscle here. So there's that. The joint. And then that muscle. Which you can't see because it's going off the page. That muscle right there. And then the thing. Uh, the hoof. <laughs> the thing. So my personal, personally when I'm drawing this, I would just draw this all as one piece. I don't usually break it up, but it's important to understand what you're actually drawing there. So you actually have a joint and two main muscles plus the big muscle, the deltoid, I think it's called, up on top with the hoof. And then the neck will go into that. And let's slim down that muscle because I've got it a little too big like that. 
So, the chest. Ah! The chest would come like that. It would basically come right about where the pony's elbow would be, would be. If you don't know, some people don't. Let me come in here. So the way the joints work on a pony or a horse is there's a joint here, a joint here, here, and one right here. This is attached to the spine. So that's basically like the shoulder. However, the elbow is actually more in this general area. And this is like a wrist. And then this would be like at the bottom of the fingers on a person. So like where your fingers bend uh, to meet the rest of the hand. So in a pony, because we know that we can Oh my god, why are you lagging? Excuse me, my computer is lagging for some reason. It's just my tablet. Lovely. Okay. So in a pony, because we know that, we can figure out how to do... Can you stop lagging? Oh my god. I don't know why it's doing this. By putting our things together, we can figure out different shapes that the... Uh... The, the hoof front legs can uh, contort into. So we can do that, or we can do, let's spread them out a little bit more and do that. So when we start constructing our character, we can kind of start giving them a little bit more dynamic posing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, okay, so here's where my top joint is. And then here is where that elbow joint is going to be. Wrist. And then the hoof. So I'm going to go like this. And this is how I would normally do it when I'm drawing. As I actually draw them all as one solid piece rather than individual pieces like this. So put the hoof in. So there we go. Basically. Now, the next thing to tackle is the back. So, here's our other line. Right here. Back legs are difficult, even for me. Um, so, we've got the hip joint right here. Oh my god, stop! Why are you doing this? This is the knee. And, um... So, horses legs go like this basically um there is a joint here and a joint here this would be equivalent to our knee so this is where the hip joints that's where the knee joints and then <clears throat> that's kind of like um an ankle and then this down here is once again where the the toes meet the rest of the foot so on a pony we go okay now, we tend to over-exaggerate that knee on ponies. And I'm not sure why, but it does seem to be the normal stylistic choice. Oh my god! This lagging is really driving me up a wall, guys! I haven't ever had this happen before. I don't know what's going on. So we're gonna wrap this in muscle. Now, make sure it's on the same line as this, otherwise your back legs are gonna look like they're floating. So, there we go. And then we just do that for the other leg. I'm gonna come and do this. So that's my area over there. This leg should be slightly offset from that one. If they met, it would look a little awkward. So we're gonna do that. And there we go. We've basically broken down the body into its fundamentary... Fundamentary? Guys, I can't speak today. It's fundamental parts. Now, for the face, the face is, um... It's special, because I do ponies. I tend to try to do something very similar to a cartoonish style. 
So when I draw the muzzle, the muzzle gets to be a square, even though, as you can see in a horse, the horse's face is way longer than a pony, so here would be this, and here would be the muzzle, so the muzzle would come like that, um, which is completely different from ponies. <laughs> Not the animal, but the, the cartoon characters. Oh my god, stop! Oh my god, stop! Please fucking stop! I shouldn't curse! Uh, guys, like, I curse like a sailor. Like, not even kidding. So it's so hard for me to do these videos without slipping up once or twice. So if I curse, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I know I have a younger audience, but... Ah, see, I almost did it again! Haha! -ha! I caught myself. Anyways. Um, ears. Ears are... Ears are a pain in the ass. I still, to this day, don't know how to draw a decent ear. So, there's a bunch of styles that I see from people. There's this one, which I've never been able to get to work properly. There's more like the show style, where they just kind of do a super minimalistic thing. Um, but what... Ah! <laughs> Failure! I am a failure! What I do is I do, uh, do, 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 and then this, um, is my preferred ear style. Uh, but yeah, ears are kind of a pain in the ass. So as you can see, I have what would be called my skeleton. This is the very basics of what I am working with. Now, for me... I actually want to, like, give this a little bit more of a neck here. I don't like how thin I made that neck. This is when I would go in and start refining all of the things that I think could be refined. So, um, a lot of the times I add this line in here on the neck, which I don't know if you can see it on the source. Yeah, you can. It's right here. And it goes into uh, what is essentially the breastbone on the horse, which is here. Um, and the other lines that I add in a lot are here, which kind of represent where the rib bones are. You can see them on this horse here. Healthy horses, you can usually see their rib bones. Um, yeah, those are, those are just things that I tend to add in, but are not necessary. I really don't like these back legs. <laughs> there is something bothering me about, uh, you know, this is usually the case with me and back legs. I'm not too fond of my own back legs on my ponies. Um, so there's just kind of like the basic skeleton and then what we would want to do is we would want to come in and start refining things. So... I'd want to take this ear here and actually make it a little bit more ear-shaped. I always end up refining a lot of my work. So... And then we're gonna give it an eye at this stage. So eyes are easy, they're just like a top line, whatever shape you want to do it. Depends on how you do it. You can do a just a bottom line, you can do no bottom line, or you can do a fully attached eye. I've been doing fully attached eyes lately. I don't know why. Just feel like they look nicer. And I always had that line there and this line here. And that's just to kind of round out the cheek area and to kind of define the eye a little bit better. Which you cannot see at all on that. Um, ponies. MLP ponies. The eyes are really wonky. Um, <laughs> kind of the story of my life with ponies is just like, it's just kind of wonky. So, here is going to be where our, kind of our, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the breastbone is. And then I'm going to do that line here. Um, defining the muscle. 
You don't have to. It's up to you how much definition you want to give to that muscle there. Um, in MLP, they don't do any. So, if I was doing an MLP style, which I've already failed at doing because I'm doing it in my style, but if I were, it would be like that. Uh, no, muscle, mu no musculature there. Oh boy, words. Um, I don't like that, <laughs> personally. I don't know. I, I'm not sure why. I just have never been a big fan. So come coming in here, we're just gonna do-do-do. Obviously, I do not have the best anatomy in the world. There are people whom I know who have amazing, like super amazing anatomy. And I just feel like a peon in comparison. I don't like where that is. <laughs> I'm going to put the, the this hoof down lower because I did not like how high it was felt like they looked like they were straining to keep it up there. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, in this second pass, that's when I kind of refine my anatomy. So, try to get this leg looking more normal in the back. And... Do, do, do same this one uh yeah there we go so let's hide our construction lines and we have this which looks relatively nice there are still some issues like I would want to fix the back of the head here so it's more like that I actually do the back of the head on ponies even though most of the time it's going to be covered by hair because you need to kind of have that line there to know where your hair is going to fall without it your hair is going to be off that being said I think my neck is off really don't like how short this pony's neck is in all honesty I would usually do it a lot longer than that but we can fix it by kind of shaving down a little bit of this shoulder. Like that. And see? His neck is instantly longer. But now it's too thin. Yay! This is the kind of shit that I have to do. A lot of it. Tweaking and redefining and making sure everything looks good. Like. Ah. This needs to be fixed here there. No! I want a defined, like, corner there. Let's give him his nose. So, what I'm trying to say with this entire video is, is that you should be paying attention to real horse anatomy and not just the anatomy that you see in the show. Because that has been stylized. And as such, you don't know what you're actually looking at. It's that person's style. They're representing certain things, but you're not going to be able to tell what that thing is until you actually look at the legitimate, like, anatomy of the creature that you're trying to draw. And believe me, I've fallen into that trap too. I've known so many artists who have, where you get in this frame of mind like, well, if this person drew it this way, then I should draw it that way. Why do I need to look at, at references when I can look at other people's art? But the thing is, is you're not going to understand what they do by looking at their art. The reason why artists are able to do anatomy so well is because a lot of them, if not the majority of them, have studied real-world anatomy. It reminds me of a story about an interview with Hayao Miyazaki, who, if you don't know, does amazing animation. Uh, that He's a Japanese animator who did movies such as Spirited Away or Howl's Moving Castle. 
which are two of my favorite animated movies, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he said that, uh, the problem with modern manga artists, and I feel like this is a problem with, uh, cartoon artists too, is they don't want to look at real things. They don't want to look at real people. They're, they're much happier looking at other people's cartoons. I wonder if I can find the exact quote, but this is basically like, uh, how to put it? I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing what he said. He basically said that it, they, they need to look more at reality if they want to be able to up their quality. And this is, this is really true. You want to take inspiration from reality because ultimately what you're trying to do as an artist is represent reality. And I should probably be drawing instead of sitting here lecturing. Um, so yeah, just draw from reality as much as you can. Obviously, sometimes you're gonna have to fudge it. Make something that's that... It just is okay, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, because ultimately, there are certain things that don't actually exist. But you can pull from other places. Uh, say, for instance, if I wanted to create a creature, I would research different animals. And I would start putting together different pieces from different animals and stuff of that nature. I'm just doing really basic hairstyles on this. Um, so, yeah. I think that's about all the knowledge I have to impart to you guys today. I'm sorry it was a bit rambly there at, at the point, at some points. And I am really sorry that I could not speak properly today. But I figured I needed to get something out there to you guys. And also the whole art anatomy thing has been weighing on my mind lately. I saw someone the other day on one of my social medias trying to argue with an artist over the fact that artists don't need to use anatomy to draw. And while you can make nice art, really pretty art, without knowing the anatomy, Anatomy is still really super important. And I know I personally have made blogs on the fact that you don't need 100% great anatomy to do great art. Because there's a lot more to it than that. But if you want to make something that looks like reality, if you want to make something that looks good, you need to know the anatomy first. So one of the big things that you see a lot is people will be like, it's just my style. It's not just your style. I'm sorry. I hate to say this. It's not just your style. You don't understand the anatomy that's going on there. And if you don't understand the anatomy that's going on there, you can't break that anatomy in a pleasing manner. You can do art without anatomy. Landscape artists. I can't do landscapes. They're amazing. But even then, they still pull from reality. They still look at things. So it's not so much just anatomy that you need to pay attention to. It just is literally looking at your world and learning how to recreate that on paper. Um, so I guess that's all I really have to say. I said this already, but... Kind of got off on another tangent. I'll talk to you guys some other time. I'll see y'all later. Bye!